Can 5-Amino 1-MQ change your life? You, the people, voted on our next video and 5-Amino 1-MQ was the winner. Thanks for voting on the poll in the community tab. It's a cool feature and I'm glad that together we could choose what to research next. I spent a lot of time reading through the data and I hope you like this video. If you do, hit us with a like and subscribe. Let's get into it. So 5-Amino 1-MQ is a highly permeable analog of methylquinolinium, say that 10 times fast, and it acts as an inhibitor of NNMT or nicotinamide and methyltransferase, which is an enzyme that acts in the cellular cytosol and it's thought to be tied to metabolism and energy homeostasis. It's most prominently expressed in the liver, adipose, or fat, and gut tissues. It was initially synthesized at the Center for Innovative Drug Discovery at the University of Texas San Antonio, and thus a lot of its evaluation comes out of this university. And it's being investigated as a target for anti-obesity and its role in cardiovascular disease. In mice, it's been shown that those with cardiovascular disease express upregulation of NNMT in the liver, as well as its end product, 1-methylnicotinamide, or MNA. Now, this end product, MNA, is anti-inflammatory and anti-thrombotic in nature. So it's theorized that in people with atherosclerosis, there is increased NNMT activity to compensate for cardiac injury. Additionally, in mice with obesity and insulin resistance, NMMT expression is upregulated in adipose tissue, and thus targeting the enzyme could possibly help in regulating metabolic detriments that contribute to development of diabetes. A study hosted by the University of Texas grabbed the bull by the horns and evaluated it for its use as a possible target for those suffering from obesity and poor metabolic profile. So they did what anyone would do and gave 5-amino-1-MQ to obese mice fed a high-fat diet. And in doing so, it quote, reduced weight, white adipose mass, decreased adipocyte size, and lowered plasma total cholesterol levels, end quote. Another more recent study in mice Mice trialed 5-amino-1-MQ in conjunction with diet-induced obesity and interestingly took a look at the microbiome. It was established in this study that when those obese mice were given the peptide in combo with a dietary switch to a low-fat diet, it not only improved lean body mass, but it also restored the gut microbiome to that of a lean mouse. Additionally, also in mice, 5-amino-1-MQ in one study shows that it may exhibit an ability to help regenerate muscle in in older mice. In a study with patients who have metastatic ovarian cancer, it's been exhibited that overexpression of NNMT in fibroblasts help promote its spread. High NNMT is also being evaluated as a poor prognostic indicator of pancreatic cancer and is indicated in spread of gastric carcinomas as well. And therein lies the question, could inhibiting this enzyme lead to improved cancer outcomes? Now let's get to bioavailability and risk risks and what we can say confidently about this pretty fascinating peptide. So it's a very permeable compound, which is a good thing since NNMT is predominantly active in the cellular cytosol, and so it has to get there. However, it's shown questionable oral bioavailability in rodent studies. It's been noted to be both poorly orally available in mice, yet strongly orally available in rats. And that's science for you. It's unclear what this says about human use. Additionally, how it's advertised is blurred by the lack of human data. You'll see some sites saying how it was evaluated in veterans. However, it seems that the University of Texas Medical Branch had only secured funding and that there seems to be no results up until this point. I'm curious to see, however, if that project comes to fruition, as it would certainly be interesting to see these results. So I think mechanistically, 5-amino-1-MQ can potentially help with deleterious conditions associated with elevated NNMT expression ranging from insulin resistance to diabetes and cancer. However, the lack of human evaluation from long-term metabolic changes to adverse effect profile puts this in the eh, maybe category for me, especially when there are peptides with similarly evaluated outcomes, like how semaglutide has shown an ability to improve metabolic risk profile, and how BPC-157, for instance, has more evidence supporting muscular regeneration. And quite frankly, the role of this peptide I'm most interested in has to do with elevated NNMT's association with poor cancer outcomes. So if I had to choose one component I'd like to see more research on, it's use of this inhibitor to target cancerous spread. However, 
However, overall, I'm pretty impressed with the University of Texas's evaluation of this experimental compound and their commitment to research. I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Do you like this peptide? Have you tried it? Has your uncle's best friend used it? There seems to be some anecdotally mixed results. That said, thanks for watching. Pound that like and subscribe button, and we'll be back soon with another peptide presentation.